Hello, and today we're going to be talking about William Blake's poem, London. So just like normal, I'm going to go through all the arts war choices to make sure that we've addressed all of the poetic choices that William Blake has made in the creation of his classic poem. So, London. London is an angry poem. Here Blake is examining the leadership's abuse of power in Victorian England. He's exploring a leader's desire to have greater control over every aspect of life, even down to our minds and our thoughts. However, despite this power, the life of the people is one of poverty, disenchantment and resentment. Now, the reason he's chose London here is because London, at the back at this time, was the centre of the British Empire. And the British Empire is vast, covering a whole stretch of the globe, and London is the heart of it. So therefore, it's one of the most important cities in the world. Blake therefore uses this as a setting for his poem to demonstrate how this is a microcosm of all British society, how the pain and the suffering that has been experienced in London and the desire for power and control within it stretches right across the whole of the British Empire. So this shows the power of control over people, both physically and mentally. It also shows the lack of power that people have to do anything about it. There's a clear conflict here between the desire of power with the benefit of having that power. They have got great control, but they are not using it to make people's lives better. So Blake's got a couple of key messages. First of all, how the state and the leadership desire to have complete control over all aspects of our lives, both physically, mentally and psychologically. However, they do not use this power and control for good and instead people are suffering. Furthermore, there is no escape and no end to this sufferance. So, in terms of techniques, the first one is this repetition of the word chartered. Something that is chartered is planned, it's organised, it's controlled. So this reflects the control and order the leaders expect over the city and the country. The fact it's been repeated uh, more than once shows that there is a, a variety of things across the country that they are looking to have control over. Now, this is quite ironic here because he's chosen to have the chartered street and the chartered Thames. And both of these things, arguably, you can't truly plan or truly organise. Uh, uh, the Thames is a, is a feat of nature. You can't control a river. You can't control where it goes. But also a street is so random and chaotic and unco uncoordinated that you can't truly properly control that either. So this demonstrates the futility of their desire to have control. They're never going to have true and complete control over all aspects of the life that they desire. Then we've got this nice, really powerful bit of imagery here, runs in blood down palace walls. Now the palace obviously represents the leadership of the country, in, the, in our case the Queen. But this also has the blood representing the people's suffering at the hands of these leaders. So this leadership is hurting the population, they should use this power for more good. We've also got this juxtaposition between the palace and the bleeding population. So those in control do not truly understand or empathise with those that they lead. And actually the leadership is becoming a symbol of the pain and the suffering that people have to go through. Structurally, this has got really equal, regular stanzas. Four lines, four lines, four lines, four lines. Um, this reflects the control and the order that the leaders wish to have on our society. However, I love this little lapse in the middle here. We've got this little break away from this complete control. All the other last lines of each stanza have a, uh, a full stop at the end, but not here. We've got a colon. Now, colons are really key because they indicate the next detail follows on from the previous point. So this is a bit like on Jomamon, even though there is a punctuation mark there. So Blake, therefore, might be suggesting how society cannot be controlled with such rigour that people will always try and break out of it. Uh, the details of the poverty and the pain would also reflect such control is not a helpful thing either. Now in terms of words, first of all we've got Harlot's Curse. Now a Harlot is a prostitute, so Blake is indicating the desperate measure the people have to take to survive. But this also implies that leadership has created the world stripped of dignity, self-respect and morals. Those are the things we associate with prostitution and those are the things that this society now has to go through to get by. He's also got this word curse. Now a curse implies that it can't be escaped and that the population is being punished just like a curse. Now what I really love is how this juxtaposes with the following line, infant's tear. Now this is demonstrating how all of this that I just previously said about the stripping of dignity, self-respect and morals applies to the whole of population, the whole of society, no matter what age, from the age of prostitution right down to the infants. Now a tear is also reflective of the suffering of the population and there is no escape as they move through life. This suggests a lack of innocence and purity at any age. 
Now onto our alliteration. Now an M should be a plosive, really. We shut our mouth when we're saying the letter M. So they should be the same as a B or a P. There should be no sound that comes out. But in this case, mm, even though our mouth is shut, there's still a little bit of sound. So this was reflective how no matter the attempts to control the government, people still resist and still struggle on. Even though they try and shut us down like that letter M should do, there's still sound, there's still an attempt from the public to try and break free. But the best thing about his literation is the language that's been used, the word choices that have been used. And he's chosen the words mind, forge, manacles. Now manacles are handcuffed. And he's just saying that the, our minds are being handcuffed. So this image of people being handcuffed reflects how the state seems to have control over people mentally and psychologically as well as physically. And this prompts the big question is where do those handcuffs come from? Is it being placed, placed upon us? Are they, are they handcuffing our minds? Or is this society and this life that we lead where someone else has got control of so many elements? Have we allowed those handcuffs to be placed on ourselves? I mean, we can't break free from it. That's a discussion that I think the examiner would love you to have when you have that when you get to that quote. Finally, in terms of rhythm and rhyme, there's a consistent alternate rhyme throughout this poem. A, B, A, B. Street rhymes with meat, flow rhymes with woe. Now, this strong control over the rhyme reflects the strong control the state has over our society. But this rhyme also becomes quite inevitable as you move through. It be, as it's so consistent, we know this alternate rhyme is going to be the same at the start, the same at the end. So this reflects how this control will always continue. There is no hope of escape from it.